real cases before a real judge. Plaintiff Dan Cruz dated the defendant and they moved in together within weeks of meeting. However, Dan claims the defendant soon started stalking his social media accounts and threatened to assault him. He's suing for the cost of a van and stolen tools. Defendant Noelle Mori says she moved in with Dan because they were going to be working together, but they broke up because he talked down to her on the job sites and ended up cheating on her. She's countersuing for unpaid wages. Start with you, sir. Okay, so um, I uh, met Noelle, and then uh, after uh, knowing her for a couple weeks, um, I asked her if she wanted to come to Indianapolis and hang out with me. And uh, she, how'd you meet her? Uh, through a friend. Okay, wasn't who, the internet? Uh, no, a friend of mine was working for me, and he brought Noelle around with him. Okay. And uh, so I met her like that, and then. Um, after knowing her for a couple of weeks, I asked her if she wanted to come to Indianapolis and stay with me. Live? And, and hang out. Yeah, oh, hang out. Hang out. We were, I, I have an RV in Indianapolis. Got it. And uh, we were in South Bend when we met. And so uh, she wasn't working, and the house she was staying in was being sold. So I asked her if she wanted to come to Indy and hang out, and she said yes. So then she came down to Indianapolis with me, um, and then uh, corona season hit. So we were locked up in the uh, RV for the next four months, which was fine. You know, she's an attractive girl. I was happy to have her there, you know. And uh, so then after being there for uh, four months or so. You are didn't you? And you had just met the woman. Just met her. And you got along fine being around each other 24-7 for how many months? For like six, eight months? For like months? Six, a total of six months, okay. uh, you know. That's pretty interesting. And so, so there was a good five months there. Yeah, a lot of men uh, during the COVID have uh, gotten divorced, and women divorced them as well, of course, but, uh, you know, kind of didn't know what it's like to be with their wives. Well, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm, try, I'm trying to get... <laughs> yeah. And when I'm they found out, it. they said, this is it not is what I meant to buy. <laughs> yeah. So you try what? I'm, I'm trying to get a divorce. I've been trying to get divorced yeah. for three years now so um, and I'm surprised at myself though really I'm proud of myself I really enjoyed being my wife all these times. There you go. I really did but what am I 40 years in? <laughs> yeah. And I still do as you yeah. just said. <laughs> That's, right. That's romantic. <laughs> Very That's charming. Don't, don't take a joke too far. <laughs> No. <laughs> I think I did bring some roses on one of those out. Oh, that was her birthday, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Defendant Noel Mori is being sued by her ex-boyfriend, who claims Noel stalked his social media accounts, threatened to assault him, and tore up his RV. So you are together that long. 24-7, locked into, and that was small quarters. It was fine. Everything was good. And then uh, all of a sudden, she started uh, mixing our towels together and, you know, saying that it didn't matter that our towels were mixed. And, you know, and then uh, next thing you know, she's stalking my Facebook page and, and getting mad about... Um, me liking other people's posts and you know yeah. other girls' posts, and so she'd start waking up talking about throat punching me and slamming <laughs> throat, yeah, punching throat punching you. me. Yeah, I can't even I can't even <laughs> I can't put it the way she said it, but um, that's mild. That's mild. Throat punch is mild. She has much more colorful words. When did it flip? You all were twenty four seven in the trailer home, lubby dubby. When did it flip over and tell me, I'm punch you in your throat, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I'm gonna it, kill you. It, it flipped one day when uh, she was chain smoking cigarettes and uh, I couldn't do the cigarettes. And uh, we're driving a couple hours down the highway. And so she, you almost got killed over a cigarette. Yeah. Go ahead, I'll let you No, I'm serious you. now, she was serious about them cigarettes. I mean, them cigarettes were probably about the most important thing to her. And, and I'm not a smoker, I don't do cigarettes. And uh, so one day she got all ticked off about these cigarettes and uh, woke me up for the second time at three in the morning, slamming cabinets and, and, and cupboards. And uh, saying I Saying what? Huh? I need some cigarettes. Where'd you put my cigarette? What saying what? I think she was trying to make me mad because I was sleeping. So when you're slamming doors and cabinets and cupboards at three in the morning, 
I don't know what's going on in your head. Let me hear from you, ma'am. Tell me some, uh, you give me some insight into the relationship up until the stage that he just spoke of. Um, it wasn't us hanging out. I was working for him. I painted uh, trailers. He worked for uh, trailer communities and would rehab the trailers. So after working for him for First you met him through a friend, worked painting. for him. Mm -hmm. And it was, met him working for him. Mm -hmm. And worked for him for, uh, I believe the one in town was a week. And then I went down with the friend um, to Indianapolis and worked with him there for another week. Every day I was paid. At the end of the day, everything seemed good. I was painting and doing different things, learning different trades. Um, he asked me if I would like to come to Indianapolis permanently and work with him going back and forth. I, that would work for me at the time. I said that'd be perfect. Um, he had a place to stay, so it would be low cost and we'd be making money. It was good. I mean, he did get angry fast. He got upset. I've smoked cigarettes for many years before him. He knew I smoked. Tell him I smoked. I'm not going to quit smoking today, maybe in the future, but you getting so upset makes me want to smoke another cigarette. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but that's how he met me. So, I mean, we were together five months total. Um, and that was the only thing going wrong primarily? Um, that and money. I okay. don't know. So there was some other things, the way he spoke to me, the way I was treated on a continual basis. I did not appreciate talking down to me at the jobs, his cheating. <laughs> I don't have time for that. All right, sir. Uh, any of this you want to address before we get to the van that you're suing her about and the stolen tools? Um, about the disrespect, the things she said well, negative you know, about you. Yeah, she says disrespect, but as we're packing up and leaving the city, she's sitting out on the porch smoking, and we're leaving. We're in the process of leaving, you know? So I don't understand, you know, how that works for her, but it doesn't work that way for me. Yeah, I'm finished with you. No cigarettes. Come on with the van. Okay, and um, what are you talking about so, ba so, so I blocked her on Facebook again, and when I blocked her on Facebook again, she went in my camper, tore the whole thing up, called me all kinds of names at the job site in front of residents' home, and then after she tore up the camper, cussed me up and down. I went and hid because I didn't want any confrontation, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, she packed up, took my stuff, took her stuff, vandalized the camper, left, went to South Bend, and then took a bunch more of my stuff. And that's how we're at this piece of the of the van. I like that about you. You say you run. I'm not run. You say you do what? Hid when she's coming. I, I, yeah, for I you. just went the other I'm way. Good. I didn't and want I do, I do the same thing. I, if I, I know I've gotten my wife upset or something and she, I don't know how it's going to turn out, you know, I run. She, she's calling me everything <laughs> but Dan oh, yeah, I just take and talking running. about throat punching me. Because I don't want to say the wrong thing back. Right. So I just take off running. <laughs> All right, so that's what you do. You hide. I was hiding. Okay. <laughs> She's talking about throat punching me. I don't need any part of that. Defendant Noelle Morey is being sued by her ex-boyfriend, who claims Noelle stalked his social media accounts, threatened to assault him, and tore up his RV. Tell me about the van and the stolen tools. You were telling me what happened okay, so she took destroying she, the camper. She took the tools when she destroyed the camper, okay. along with my blankets and towels and, and silverware and everything she could get her hands on. Um, and then uh, uh, she went back to South Bend, went to my house. And when she went back to South Bend and went to my house, she took the title to this van, which was in South Bend because my daughter had, had paid for it for me. Okay, and so she went, she took the title to this van. I came from Indianapolis back to South Bend. I called her, I'm at home. She shows up with the police with the title to my van in her name. And I had to unload my whole van of all my tools and she, of the tools I had left that she didn't take. And then uh, left me without a vehicle. Here's a copy of that title. What about the tools? The, the get, tools? Uh huh. I don't know what tools he's talking about. What tools had, are you talking about again? I had two the DeWalt ones she took. tools. <laughs> I had two DeWalt tools, an impact drill and a regular drill. Your Honor, she had two bags. And both of those impact, or the impact and the regular drill, I did pawn because I had no money. When we broke up, I had $40 in my pocket. Mr. Cruz refused to pay me any money. 
he put those in my name because I was not getting paid. Any money that I was getting paid from Mr. Cruz, I was putting back in the So he gave you business. this in exchange for payment? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, well, it was as an asset for me because I explained if to what? him. what? An asset for me because I explained to him. Uh, yeah, but it was his asset because then you say he paid for it. But he's putting them in my name because he, he owed me. did he pay for it? Did I pay for it? Did he pay for it? The van? Uh-huh. The van he did pay for, yes. Okay, that's why you dodged that question so no, much. No, I didn't understand what you said. talking about That was a very easy question. <laughs> I did he pay for it? Was. Did he pay for the car in question? He did. Okay, and that presumes it's his and presumes that perhaps uh, uh, he put it in someone's name, as often is the case, right. because um, whatever his uh, situation might be. Can I say uh, he could be engaged in some type of fraud, or in somebody getting yeah. garnished, getting garnished, or has a lien on him or something. Yeah. And there's you both. Huh? And he's getting divorced. Yeah, there you go. And he also is being sued for thousand dollars. See? <laughs> so there was three vehicles put in my name, not just one, three vehicles. So, Your Honor, the only reason they were in her name is because she stole the titles. She says it was put in her name as payment for work she did. What do you say? How did it get in her name? When I bought the vehicle, it was during the corona season and no BMVs were open and I was out of town. My daughter picked up the title and finished the payment on the vehicle. Anyone um, have any evidence? Uh, communications uh, it to was prove whose story is right. Tell me how you Your Honor, prove. she got mad when I blocked her on Facebook and she went to my house and stole the title out of my drawer because it was an open title. I have a statement on Exhibit 3 from the person that I bought it from explaining that when they gave the title to me, they gave it to my daughter, it was left open. I saw that. Yeah, and so the reason, the way she got that title was because it was left open. Did you get it from his daughter? No, no she I got it from not. my daughter. I got it from him. Yeah, he you had said it. that, but that's not what the seller says. Man. Right. All right, I and... Can. I got you, ma'am. Defendant Noelle Morey is being sued by her ex-boyfriend, who claims Noelle stalked his social media accounts, threatened to assault him, and tore up his RV. Let's get to your unpaid wages, because on the one hand, you're saying you took the car for unpaid wages, Correct. and now you want 5000 more. What is that for? Um, he owes me, I have a, let me see. First, let's go over the amount, uh, what that represents with the car, how much money in salary does that represent? The van that we're talking yes, about, the Chevy Express? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the Chevy Express is $2,000. There's so a total of $6,380. Where? On page five and six. Okay, I see it. Five um, star sheets, new car. Uh, each one of these are our jobs. And so the total amount paid, it shows like countryside mobile home park. That was the park we did. And then there's a whole trailer paint. He got paid $2,000. We had agreed I get paid $10 an hour and a percent. Ma'am, let me tell you what I see that adds up to that. Because uh, what you're saying I'm not clear is not clear to me. Five star sheets. Correct. New car allowed. That's five thousand dollars. Correct. What is that? I don't even know what that um, is. We five star sheets. Did what work is that? for five star sheets. That's the company's name. Uh huh. So you those did are... work for them? Yes. Well, I did work for his company. As a sub. Yes. His company had the contract. Correct. And you did the work. Correct. As a subcontractor to his company. He was paying me cash. It All right. Really. And that's five thousand dollars. He never paid you. No, five thousand dollars is the total he got paid. I was to get paid a percentage of the jobs. Okay, so these totals, I thought they were from your company. They're all a I percentage of a his company. Com okay, I, Seth, I thought it was as a subcontractor. No. Whether you have a company or not, you don't have to have a company to be a subcontractor. He did not have Somebody has the contract, and you say, I'll do the work for you if you give me this amount. That wasn't the deal? He, I was to get a percentage no. of each okay, job. Okay, what was, was the no. agreement? There was no agreement. All right, no agreement, then I can't enforce anything. Both your claims are dismissed. Have a good day. No agreements, no enforcement. Nothing to enforce. Bye-bye. You can quit calling me. You're suing me. Don't call me. Okay? When we last spoke with plaintiff Dan Cruz, he told us that he tried to contact defendant Noelle Morey after their case, but she wouldn't respond. We tried reaching out to Noelle, but were unsuccessful. 
So Noel, if you're watching, please give us a call.